Assalamu alaikum everybody. So in today's video, I wanted to be very straight to the point about making money as a Muslim, which I view as a need, but many people disagree. And I think generally there are two extremes. One people who say, oh, I don't need any money, Allah will provide. And they just kind of live this life of victimhood or I don't know how to say it, where they don't really take control of their finances. And then there's the other extreme, which tends to lead to dunya obsession with making money and forgetting about the akhira and your actual purpose of in this dunya in this existence in this life so i want to kind of break it down because i'm an entrepreneur so obviously i'm motivated by making money all day i'm just dealing with money and um, i wanted to kind of give you my perspective on this issue so uh, generally speaking, I'm surrounded by dunya focused people. This is the majority because they are non Muslim. They don't have a framework of um, the hereafter or something like that. So they are too obsessed with their job. It's their main uh, purpose in life. It's basically, if you take it away, they are crumbled. And um, really, it's. Uh, if I'm around them for a long time, it's it's driving me crazy and I kind of despise it. Uh, so I don't have this love for this uh, obsession of money, but it is ingrained in us as Allah says in the Quran. And then there's also multiple hadiths which uh, says that even if uh, the son of Adam had a valley of gold, he would ask for another one. You love it. All of us, you watching, you love money. Even if you don't agree, you love it because Allah said it, not me. So generally this is my perspective however i have some muslim friends and i'm juggling these two worlds so i'm i have this dunya non-muslim kind of my uh, work startups tech companies agencies corporations just kind of like nasty business world and then i have these uh, like uh, my friends uh, who are muslim and they don't really they have very different backgrounds so I have these two worlds completely different and it allowed me to kind of see both sides because I was very poor when I grew up. I didn't have any money, to be honest. I was raised by a single mom and I was, this is a, I have this psychological issue. I had this uh, thing where I wanted to prove to people that I'm worth something. So I was super obsessed with making money. I, uh, this was uh, like my main concern. Um, and I think that's normal for a young man, but this was like, driving me to the to the edge of suicide basically because i wasn't able to meet the demands that i had in my head and i still compare myself relatively speaking to people with a lot of money so now i'm looking at some of my friends or some of the people in this kind of um, entrepreneurship land who are making like 10 million dollars and i'm like looking at man i should do that like or a million is like that's okay and and then I'm, and then I, on the other hand, I have some of my friends who can't even pay rent, who are struggling to make like the ends meet. And they're still giving sadaka, they're still giving charity, but they cannot even afford to pay rent. Do you get it? They cannot even, they don't even know what's going to happen next month. And I've been in both shoes because I had this experience and now I have this. And it's insane. It's kind of insane. I view money, generally money, as like kind of an energy, not in any spiritual sense, but actually money allows you to to change things or to buy things or change environment. Basically, everything around us in this dunya has been built in the worldly perspective by men. Besides the mountains and rivers, all the things have been built by either a government or a private sector, so an entrepreneur, or houses are built by individuals. So the houses okay that's fine but who is building the shopping malls who's building um all these things it's entrepreneurs it's people with money and with really good thinking and you know being very practical people um so this is uh the type of person i am basically i'm not this guy this guy who thinks i i used to be very deep in my thought but it kind of takes you away from the practical things in your life like you need to make money because you can think about anything you want but if you can't pay your rent there are consequences and this leads to then this prison mindset where if you hate money if you hate basically this world for what it is and you don't want to be involved in kind of uh, progressing your career which is very dangerous sometimes but 
as a man, I'm talking to, to men, of course, because this is our main purpose. And Allah tells us this, like we are the financial providers for our families. So it's quite important, you know. Um, and you have to, if you don't really get that, or if you have a wrong understanding of how money is made then you will forever struggle you will forever be in a circle and you'll be like why am i not making money like i uh, because you it's actually making money is like a simple math um issue and most people are stuck in their jobs it's impossible to make money in, in your job first of all it's never gonna happen so only if you're like a partner at a law firm where you get a bonus of 100k okay maybe you can make something but if you want to make an income which would lead to some sort of financial freedom let's say and i hate this word financial freedom but it is then that's impossible in a job 20 uh, 9 to 5 that's not it's not designed for that 9 to 5 is designed for slavery work for factory workers look it up look at the history it was designed in britain for factory workers it's shift planning um so it's not gonna it's like you're trading time for your for money this is a loserish way to make money because you're actually you're you're selling your time you're like a slave i'll give you eight hours you give me this money what do you do in those eight hours you know you're just print putting excel spreadsheets or something you know you're kind of wasting your life and you have to step up you have to kind of uh do something else because this is not sustainable you either have to get some equity in, in the company so they can sell it and give you some bonus or you have to make a really good career in as a lawyer or as a doctor which is very difficult and time consuming and you need a lot of education and stuff like that or you simply become an entrepreneur which is the hardest path, path of this because most of them most of them fail and they can lead to really big problems but this is the path i chose and it's uh, freeing because you can dictate your income if you find a business model that works you can kind of scale it scale down and you know, basically make money now besides talking about this why is it important let's go back what what's the benefit why be a slave this is a problem i have friends who like say oh i don't care about the money i don't need it but then i say hey you're coming for juma oh i can't i have to be at work slave you could have decided to not do this job you could have found another job or you could have founded a company or something where you would have this friday window for attending a juma so you're actually sinning and you're justifying it with oh i have to work i have to make ends meet yes you have to but uh you you can't do this forever like <laughs> why you this is your obligation you understand this in islam so so you know it just blows my mind that they can't see how limited they are in even in Dean. Even in Dean. You can't go to the Juma, first of all. Because you have to work. Okay. Second of all, let's look at the benefits. For example, you need to buy a house, right? You wanna buy a house, you wanna buy an apartment, and you wanna stick to your Dean. So you don't wanna do riba, you don't wanna do conventional mortgage, fine. Let's say in your country there is no Islamic bank. What do you do? What do you do with your average barely average salary impossible to save money and it's impossible to buy a house because you can't have you can't make the cash needed for a house so basically you are uh, you are destined for renting forever rent is very expensive so you'll be renting forever this is also not great so you have there's only one option you have to save the money for the house but how do you save it if your income is very low this is impossible. You have to change your income. You have to change your job. You have to. There's no other option. Or you can live like this. But I'm saying, why would I live like this if I want to, let's say, have a house with my wife and kids? It's going to be a better, li a better life, better outcome, better everything. Not for the dunya, but like we need it. And it's like it's even more financially reasonable because I don't pay rent then. Anyways, then you have, for example, sadaka. You can you can do more charity. You can pay your zakah because you will be paying zakat payments. So you have more reward in that. You have more reward in, in, in zakah. And you can actually finance things which are important, like building the masjid, which we're doing here, and you guys helped finance it. How do you think this is done without money? Without money, the Prophet وسلم, would be impossible to, to do anything. Even though he himself didn't have much and he was working with Khadija and they had the business and caravans and all that. But he had money from Uthman, عنه, Abu Bakr, Omar, 
they all gave for Islam. They gave half their wealth and Abu Bakr gave everything basically. So without this, and he was a lot of times um, negotiating money, our Prophet ﷺ, because he understood that without money, this deen, this, this thing is not possible to finance. We have to finance this. And it was like starvation and, uh, and all that. And in Medina, of course, they become more powerful. But in the beginning, it was, it was very difficult. So you can't be living like the difficulty forever. You have to make ends meet. And I think, uh, yeah, even if you look at that, it's important. But you, you look at their life. Did Omar uh, associate himself with his wealth? Their Abu Bakr? No, they were ascetic. They lived, they slept on the floor. They, they, they disregarded their entire wealth, their dunya. Uthman radiallahu anh, gave away a thousand camels for free to the deen of Allah. So all these guys, all these Sahaba, they didn't associate with wealth, but they understood this is important for our goal, which is to spread Islam, which is also my goal. Um, I can't make a lot of money just for myself. That doesn't make any sense. I have enough. But there are things which I'm looking 30, 20 years at, or from now. And uh, with money, it's the easiest thing to so so solve, you know, easiest solution. We need a building. Boom, I can buy a building. We need this, this. I don't need to depend on Islamic foundations. I don't need to depend on state to give me money. I don't need to depend on weird people who give me money and then ask, hey, can I do this because I gave you money? No, bro, I'm self-funded. Screw. This is the way to achieve freedom in all these areas. So that's another reason. Uh, also, you have an obligation to your wife and kids. Like, you know how expensive it is to take care of a family? How do you want to do it with average salary? It's impossible. Your wife will have to work. Now, if your wife works, Who's taking care of the kids? You know, this is gonna, again, change your family dynamics. It's gonna be a problem, man. You have to increase the income. There are ways to do it. Uh, I don't have time to delve into the ways. I'm building this course as well for, for making uh, your own agency as a freelancer, transferring to an agency. It's very difficult to, to do because I have so much stuff that I'm doing, um, but hopefully, inshallah, I'll, I'll make it so. Because I think that's the, the easiest way to make digitally some income. But it's not for everybody. Like I personally hate online. I hate my laptop. I hate everything because it makes me locked in this room or in a coffee place. And I love the mountains. I just wanted to hike yesterday. So I went on a hike during a work day. Like I went on a hike in the middle of the work day. This is impossible to do in a, if you're working somewhere. Like anytime I want to do something, I just go. I have some meetings, but I can reschedule them. You know, so it gives you that freedom, but also you have a tremendous amount of responsibility. You can be sued. You have to, your customers are your, basically your bosses. So if your customers are mad, then you're kind of screwed. Uh, you can pray wherever you want. You don't have to kind of deal with that. Um, what else? And you can do the halal way, everything. So I just see tremendous benefits in making money. If you don't associate with the wealth and you do it the Sahaba way, that's the path. So this is my perspective. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, Muslims, some of them are too extreme and they go and buy these Lamborghinis and cars in the UK. Like that's, that's a dunya. That's, that's not, I have a regular car. I have a everything regular, but I'm banking in the back end. I'm banking in the back end for a house. Like why would I buy a car? That doesn't make any sense. That's a commodity. It goes down in value. I want to invest in something that appreciates. There's appreciation over time. Um, so this is kind of how I, how I look at it. Uh, you can't live in this world without money. I see some people who are philosophers who are this, we have so many great people in our local Ummah here who have so much knowledge. It's incredible, but they are struggling to even get food on the table. Like really they, I say, Hey, let's meet and let's do this. Oh, I can't afford a bus ticket. I'm like, subhanAllah. Some of these people have memorized the Quran. They have so much knowledge. But no one benefits from this knowledge because they can't even do anything. They can't afford a camera. They can't travel. They can't do that. This is a problem. I understand if you focus on Islam, it takes a lot of your time. And that's great. But you also live in reality. And our Prophet told us, hey, live in both worlds. Don't just focus on deen and then forget your dunya. Do the dunya as well. But don't forget the deen. <laughs> yeah, it's a balance. Uh, hopefully this was clear. And uh, let me know in the comments, what do you think? Should you focus on the on making money or do you say oh i hate money i can just live without it as a, as a whatever okay cool
This is my perspective. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We'll see you in the next video, inshallah. Thank you for watching this and uh, let's be in touch. <laughs> Goodbye.